Hi there, I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I'm offering this devotion as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit, for the soul. And it's titled, Joy is There Everywhere. Let's get giddy with it. So I've enjoyed a couple of weeks break. I have known much joy in this time, whether that's been spending time with friends, some dear friends actually, really intimately getting close to people in a, in a, in a spiritual sense of course, visiting beloved places, really connecting with nature, with life, with everything. I also spent a few days with little Charlie, a time that we both enjoyed immensely. And I've reflected on these simple joys in my daily sharing of the, the little things. I can't tell you how much that daily sharing of it comes in the little things have helped me since early December. And you know what? I've also known some deep, deep, deep caring love from so many folk, so many people. Yes, there are still great difficulties, difficulties that we all face in life. And I, I certainly don't turn away from them. And by not turning away from them, I too get to experience the joy of living, the joy of living in all life's mystery. So much joy. Just simply being here, being alive, despite the real troubles that we all face, the real pain, deep pain at times. I have learned really that joy comes from appreciation and appreciation comes from paying attention. As Mary Oliver said so beautifully, attention is the beginning of devotion. And I've learned that such attention and thus devotion enables us to fully experience the joy of living, to know joy we must engage fully in the reality of everything, even that which causes deep, deep pain. Joy is beneath all that. Joy comes alive despite all of that, or maybe because of that, actually. I'm not sure. Rabindranath Tagore wrote, Joy is everywhere. It's in the earth's green covering of grass, in the blue serenity of the sky in the reckless exuberance of spring, in the severe abstinence of grey winter, in the living flesh that animates our bodily frame, in the perfect poise of the human figure, noble and upright, in living, in the exercise of all our powers, in the acquisition of knowledge, in fighting evils, in dying for gains we can never share, Joy is there everywhere. There's something about the essence and the energy of life, actually. That's what joy is. It's not a thing. It's an energy that moves in our lives. Joy is there everywhere. Do we believe this? What does your life teach you? What energizes you? How do you feel when you are around a person who is filled with joy, enjoying life, enjoying who they are, singing the joy of living in all life's mystery? What do you do when you are around such a person? I hope that you never try to clip their wings, to put them off being who they truly are, learning to fly free. I hope you never try to enslave them by the dangers of living by telling them they must live more safely. If I've learned anything in life, if you are to be cautious about anything, it's your, you ought to be cautious about playing it too safe. Be very careful about that. But it won't guard you against the dangers of life. It will only strangle the joys of living. You can't play it safe. I was recently sat with some friends enjoying coffee. I do it all the time, actually, with anybody who knows me. Enjoying conversation. I was in a joyful mood, full of song, rolling my R's and just having a lovely time being alive. And there was no reason for it. 
And what was lovely is that no one there tried to curb my enthusiasm. Quite the opposite. I was with some good friends. But that's not always, not always been the case. There are people who will try and curb your enthusiasm. They've done it in my life and I've allowed them to do so at times. You can suppress who you are really to think that you're trying to fit in. And when we suppress who we are, we suppress our true nature. We lose the joy of living. Fear takes over. I listen to when people speak to me, but I do not allow anybody to clip my wings these days. Or not for long anyway. I want to listen to the voice of joy in life. I want to have a deep conversation with joy. I want to live in faith, not fear. It's what gives me the courage to be. It was what allows me to know joy in everything. David White has said of joy, joy is a meeting place, a deep intentionality and of self-forgetting, the bodily alchemy of what lies inside us in communion with what formerly seemed outside, but is now neither but become a living frontier, a voice speaking between us and the world, dance, laughter, affection, skin touching skin, singing in the car, music in the street, the quiet, irreplaceable and companionable presence of a daughter, the sheer intoxicating beauty of the world inhabited as an edge between what we previously thought was us and what we thought was other than us. Joy is the conversational nature of reality, at least according to White, and I agree, it's in that space that comes alive between us and the other. What we think we are and what we think they are, joy is that invisible embrace. But to live in joy, to have faith in life is not always easy. And you know what? It's even harder to put into words to describe. It is far easier for us to talk about pain and suffering, to talk about despair. You know, you just enter in any academic environment or follow social media or the daily news for that matter. People find it far easier to talk about their pain than to talk about their joy. Why is that? Language is easier even. There is more language for such things. The wonderful Henry Nguyen observed that anxiety and suffering are far more easily expressed than joy. He wrote, I vividly remember how one of my university teachers spoke for a whole year about anxiety in human life. He discussed in great detail the thoughts of Kierkegaard, Sartre, Heidegger and Camus and gave an impressive expose of the anatomy of fear. One day during the last month of the course, a few students found the courage to interrupt him and ask him to speak a little about joy before the course was over. At first he was taken aback, but then he promised to give it a try. The next class he started, he hesitantly, hesitantly began to speak about joy. His words sounded less convincing and penetrating than when he spoke about anxiety and fear. Finally, after two more meetings, he told us that he'd run out of ideas about joy and would continue his interrupted train of thought. This event made a deep impression on me, especially since I had such great admiration for my teacher. I kept asking myself why he was unable to teach about joy as eloquently as he had taught about anxiety. a good question don't you think why is it so much easier to speak about anxiety than to speak about joy we have no trouble describing our sadness what is wrong what stricken us as individuals and, and as, as a society no one observed that there are far more words for sickness than for health more for abnormal conditions than for normal conditions when my leg hurts my head aches, my eyes burn, or my heart stings. I talk about it, often in elaborate ways. But when I am perfectly healthy, 
I have little, if anything, to say about these parts of my body. I saw it earlier today with a friend with a poorly toe. She was able to talk about her poorly toe, but not the rest of herself, which was in fine fettle, actually. In fact, we all focused on her toe. I did it myself earlier when I, talk, when I talked about some heartache, but I was able to talk about joy, which grew from the same place. Why is it so much easier to talk about our troubles than it is to talk about joy? We have more nuanced language for the, for the negative aspects in our lives. You know what my greatest resentment in the world is? I've talked about this before, actually. My greatest resentment in life is against the word resentment. Which comes, the English word resentment at least, comes from, from resentier, which literally means to re to refeel something. Now when we refeel a memory from our past, from the life in our past, those memories are not always painful, are they? It's not always something that makes us angry. And yet, and yet the word resentment only has negative connotations remember it means to re to literally resense to refeel but we don't have a word to talk about resensing or refeeling something that is joyful the word resentment which means to resense is only used in a negative sense why is that i don't know and yet joy is there everywhere do we believe this what do our lives teach us? Well, here's a little wisdom from one of the greats, one of my favourites, somebody I'm currently enjoying again, sharing with a friend, the poetry of Mary Oliver. And this poem's about not hesitating when joy suddenly comes. This is called Don't Hesitate by Mary Oliver. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and are not very often kind. And much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. It's meant to be abundant too. I'm with Mary. Joy is not made to be a crumb. No way. It is to be shared abundantly. And yet, and yet, and yet we hide from joy and we find it so hard to describe, so hard to talk about. Why is it so hard to speak of joy? Why is this? Well, I've come to believe that one reason that we struggle to speak of joy is that joy is not something we experience, not really on the surface. That's happiness, if you like. Joy is not merely of the mind or body. Joy is about the spirit. And thus it is harder to make sense of and harder to control with our minds, to control, to tame with our language. language. And some will say that the reason for this is that joy is an abnormal state. I don't think that's true. I think qu quite, I couldn't agree with them less. Joy is not an abnormal state. Joy, I believe, is the very essence of life. You can't tame joy. You can't control joy. And perhaps this is why we distrust and fear joy. Joy in ourselves and sometimes joy in others. Maybe that's why we try to clip each other's wings at times. To keep people down, grounded. And yet we're supposed to fly somewhere between heaven and earth. At times we're allowed to fly. Not too close to the sun, of course. Now that's what that mythos is about. That ideal between the two. 
Icarus, you float. You, you can't fly too close to the sun or too close to the ground. There's somewhere in between. That's where joy is. <laughs> now, joy is linked closely to ecstasy. I'm not talking about the party drug. No, I'm not talking. But ecstasy in the true meaning of the word. Ecstasy is derived from the Greek word ecstasis, formed from ek, meaning out, and stasis, stasis, a state of standstill. So ecstasy literally means to stand, to be outside of a static place, to be outside of a static place. Ecstasy is a constantly moving state. It is not rigid, it is not fixed. And guess what? Joy is the same. Joy is always new. Joy is about life. Joy is about creation. Thus, those who live ecstatic lives are always moving away from rigidly fixed situations. They are exploring new unmapped dimensions of reality. This is the essence of joy. Blessed are the flexible, but they will never be bent out of shape. It's about moving. It's like yoga, really. It's this constant movement of things. Joy is new. Joy is about life. Joy is about creation. Joy is about energy. Think about those joy-filled moments you had when you've been really free. Maybe while dancing or singing or playing or creating, running free or at the birth of a child, whatever it might be. That moment when you were like a child again, when you were full of joy, joyful, joy-filled. Fill overflowing with joy, bursting the banks of the river joy. When you were giddy, giddy with life. Can you remember the last time you got giddy? Well, I get giddy with some folk. I've been getting giddy at times. I haven't needed to get giddy at times recently. I love getting giddy with folk. But I love people I can be still and silent with, to talk about serious things with, to weep with. But I also love to be with the same people. I have to be able to get giddy with them, to be so full of exuberant life, to laugh so loud that the earth shakes. But also to be silent with the same. Did it last Saturday night? It was beautiful. Beautiful. We need to get giddy with it. We do. Because by doing so, I mean, we may well just begin to experience the true joy of living. By the way, giddy is one of those words that's been reduced in meaning over time. Just like so much of our language, we secularise it and reduce it to, to nearly nothing. In medieval times, giddy used to mean being possessed by a god or spirit. Now, this was not considered to be a good thing, as to be in such a state was considered to be a kind of insanity, if you like, some kind of simple mindedness, if you like, some kind of religious, a giddy person was considered a bit of a religious fanatic, actually. So religion, certainly in the modern time, has shied away from such expressions and feelings. My tradition has it, actually. It's, at times, it's distrusted emotion and, and has worshipped rationality. I think Unitarians were once called, rather mockingly, God's frozen people. Well, they're no longer called that. Certainly not this minister, anyway. And I certainly don't preach that kind of idea. We must never free our true, fear our true, true nature. Our true nature is to enjoy life, to live by joy. So some thoughts on joy, some things to think about as we enter these final days and weeks of this summer. Some questions to leave you with, basically. What do you think is the nature and the energy of life? Is joy the essence of life? Is it? Is it the energy that forms all life, all creation? How do we find ways to articulate and express joy? So that others can understand what we mean. Maybe we can't do it through words. Maybe words are never going to be enough. And that's as a man of the word. <laughs> he speaks so many. Maybe we can't tell people what joy is. Maybe all we can do is show them. 
to show them, and if you must, use words. Joy is there everywhere. Do we believe this? What does your life teach you? What does your life teach you? So I'm going to end this devotion with some, some final words of blessing. You know, we can all bless. We need to bless more and we can all do it. We bless people by giving ourselves fully to life, exuberantly, singing the joy of living in all its mystery. So let's step out into the world once more and let's not seek the narrow path that, are not, that avoids the wilderness. Let's instead walk in faith, in courage, in hope. Let's walk along love's broad, inviting highway where we can dance and sing the joy of living in all its mystery. Let's experience all that life offers to us Let's show one another the way of love. And may the love of God go with us all, in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do.